Hello, everyone. I believe you can see my screen and hear me well. And welcome to today's webinar, Sun versus Software Defined Storage. I'm a solution engineer here at Starwind. My name is Anton. And today joining me is my colleague Vitaly. Yes, hello, everyone. My name is Vitaly and I am a solution engineer in Starwind as well. So I'm glad to be here today and delve into this exciting discussion with you. So let's start. Absolutely. So let's discuss our agenda for today. We are diving into a really interesting topic, the fight between SAN and software defined storage. We'll also chat about infrastructure and compare converged and hyperconverged infrastructure. Plus, we see how the industry has changed over the past decade. We will tell you about Sun core components and key differences between two main protocols, Fiber Channel and an iSCSI. We will discuss the pros and cons of SN, helping you understand its benefits and challenges during implementation. On the flip side, we will delve into the software-defined storage and this approach with numerous benefits. We will explore its advantages as well as possible challenges and limitations it entails. Eventually, we will look at the different use cases where each solution shines, helping you make right decision when considering SAN or SDS for your specific requirements. So uh, SAN, which stands for Storage Area Network and SDS or Software Defined Storage, are both integral parts of modern data storage solutions. Uh, but before we start, let's establish the basic definitions of SAN and SDS and what we mean when we mention them. So SAN is a dedicated network that allows multiple servers to access shared storage resources. On the other hand, SDS is a storage architecture that separates the storage management software from the underlying hardware. This abstraction gives you more flexibility by virtualizing control over storage resources. Let's suppose that the, the well-known SDS representative is a VSAN. And now uh, that we covered the basics, let's talk how those infrastructures can be implemented. Converged infrastructure is a hardware-based approach that brings together compute, uh, storage, and the networking components into a pre-engineered system. This simplifies the process of deployment and management, and it includes servers, storage arrays, networking equipment, and management software that are designed to work together seamlessly. The goal of the converged infrastructure is to make a deployment easier, streamline management, and improve overall efficiency by consolidating components from various vendors in a single solution. It reduces complexity and creates a more unified and integrated infrastructure environment. And in contrast, we have HCI, which stands for Hyperconverged Infrastructure. It's a software-based approach. It takes conversions on the next level by combining compute, storage, and networking in individual nodes. This creates a highly scalable and easily managed infrastructure. HCI combines not only the hardware components, but also the storage and virtualization into one software-defined platform. In HCA environment, each server node has its own CPU, memory, storage, and networking resources. These nodes are clustered together and managed as a one system. The storage in HCI usually operates via SDS, where sto uh, storage resources are separated from the underlying hardware and managed centrally. A great example of this is Starwind vSAN, which deploys either as application on Windows Server or VM in VMware cluster. Great, and now let's understand the current landscape and the market trends. Uh, we can see how the industry has shifted from the traditional converged infrastructure towards HCA over the past decade. According to the Future Market Insights analysis, the global sun market is projected to experience steady growth with a uh, compound annual growth rate of approximately 4% from 2022 till 2029. And in 2021, the global sun market was valued at approximately 19.5 billion and it's increased to around 20.5 billion in 2022. 
By the year of 2029, it is expected to reach a valuation of about 26.9 billion, and the sun market is anticipated to contribute roughly 7% of the global uh, next generation data storage market. Looking at the historical estimates, the global sun market has a value of 14.9 billion in 2014, and it estimated that the demand of the sun will grow at compound annual grow rate for 4% during period of 2014 till 2021. And on the second chart, we can observe the representation of the global HCM market. This growth is driven by the rising demand for flexible infrastructures, especially in the aftermath of COVID-19 pandemic. IMRC's market research indicates a significant increase in the demand for adaptable and resilient systems. In 2021, the HCI market was valued at 7.5 billion, uh, and by 2022, it had already reached 10.3 billion. With a compound annual growth rate of about 26%, it's projected to reach a market size of 29.4 billion by 2027. It's outstripping the forecasted value of the SEN market. Those numbers uh, highlight the increasing importance of HCI and its popularity among organizations worldwide. The need for scalable and easily manageable storage solutions has become critical and HCI offers exactly that. The charts also indicate an industry shift from converged to hyperconverged solutions. Thus, it's important for us to understand these trends and be ready to adapt to the changing situation. So after the market trends, let's discuss the Sun core components. And uh, first of all, uh, Sun is a specialized network that connects storage devices and servers, creating a dedicated high-speed network for storing and accessing data. And at the heart of every Sun, there are three main components, servers, storage, and the networking infrastructure. And let's briefly uh, look at them. Okay, let's start with host components. The server infrastructure is the foundation of a SAN setup. It consists of different server platforms and plays uh, an important role in server consolidation and the expansion of online business. As data volumes increase, the demand for scalable and efficient storage solutions become paramount and servers in a SAN fulfill this role. Um, storage is another critical component of a SAN. It can consist of a different types of systems, including traditional disk systems with HDDs, uh, modern solutions like SSDs or flash drives, and even tape systems with the tape drives, autoloaders, and tape libraries. It's remarkable how storage technology has evolved over the years, and SAN are designed to accommodate this variety. They provide businesses with the flexibility to adapt their storage infrastructure according to their specific requirements. And let's not forget about the network infrastructure. It plays a primary role in SAN connectivity. Hardware components like switches, gateways, and routers work together to interconnect storage devices and servers seamlessly. A key technology that powers this connectivity is fiber channel. It's like the superhighway which makes the data flows smoothly between storage and servers. However, we all know that SAN can also operate using iSCSI protocol as an alternative. So let's compare them uh, on the next slide. And this is basically the topic of our discussion here. And let's start by understanding the fiber channel protocol. So. FC is a block-level storage protocol that utilizes fiber channel technology to connect storage devices to a servers. It is known for its high-speed data transfer capabilities, making it suitable for mission-critical zero-tier applications and databases such as online transactional processing, banking applications, data analysis, and more. It brings several benefits to the table. Uh, firstly, it offers the low latency, resulting in a faster IOPS and throughput compared to the iSCSI. It excels in providing optimal performance for mission-critical applications 
that require minimal latency and low overhead. Fiber channel sense are proposed builds to ensure exceptional reliability and performance. And additionally, the isolated nature of a fiber channel, separate from non-storage traffic, guarantees dedicated uh, and efficient performance for those workloads. And unfortunately, fiber channel does come with its drawbacks. So one of the major considerations is the cost. Fiber channel sense require specialized hardware like fiber channel adapters and switches, uh, which can be more expensive on front compared to a SCSI. Moreover, setting up a separate Ethernet network for non-storage communication adds to the overall cost. Managing fiber channel uh, sand can also be more complex and time-consuming. It requires special skills and the learning curve for managing fiber channel sense is higher compared to SCSI. And now let's shift our focus to the Internet Small Computer System Interface, which stands for the iSCSI protocol. And iSCSI is a sense storage protocol that leverages Ethernet network to connect storage devices to the servers. It utilizes the standard TCP IP stack network to transfer SCSI packets from the source to the target block storage. And the nice SCSI sense offer simplicity and ease of implementation. They used familiar TCP IP stack and Ethernet networking infrastructure, making them easier to set up and manage compared to the fiber channel sense. And one of the significant advantages of SCSI is its ability to make changes without disruption. Unlike fiber channel, iSCSI sense allow for seamless modifications, reducing downtime and offering more flexibility for storage changes. Additionally, iSCSI sense are typically less expensive and have lower maintenance costs. And they utilize standard Ethernet network routers, adapters and switches. There is no need for specific hardware like fiber channel adapters require. Iskazi is a popular choice for small and medium-sized business uh, that usually values simplicity and affordability and thanks to its cost effectiveness. Um, however, it's important to consider the drawbacks of an Iskazi as well. Iskazi Sense operate within a mixed network environment, sharing the Ethernet network with the other workloads. This means it can result in a higher latency compared to a dedicated network of a fiber channel. While iSCSI sense provide impressive throughput speeds, the latency factors make them less suitable for mission-critical zero-tier workloads that require minimal latency. Okay, let's now move forward and explore the benefits, features, and considerations of implementing SAN in your organizations. Um, to begin, let's start by understanding the numerous benefits that the SAN brings to the table. A SAN offers high performance by floating storage functions and utilizing a separate network fabric dedicated to storage tasks. Another advantage is storage efficiency. Here are some few key factors I want to mention, like uh, deduplication, which identifies and eliminates redundant data blocks across the storage infrastructure, compression techniques, they used to reduce the size of data before it's stored on a SAN, and storage tiering, which allows us to place the data on different types of storage media based on its importance. Security is another thrown advantage of a fiber channel SAN with its own isolated network infrastructure for storage traffic. SAN is generally considered a secure storage system, which is especially important for organizations dealing with the sensitive data. And also, SANs often provide features like snapshots to have a quick way for data restore. And while the benefits of a SAN storage architecture are reasonable, it's important to consider the potential drawbacks. So, the cost is a consideration. Building a fiber channel set requires expensive hardware like HBAs, cabling, switching, and arrays. The initial investment can be significant, and the cost depends on factors like 
the vendor, specifications, and customization options. Another challenge is the spe specialized network requirement of Fiber Channel Sense. Unlike Ethernet based networking, Fiber Channel Sense need a separate dedicated network infrastructure which limits the utilization of existing LAN. And managing a Fiber Channel SAN also requires specialized knowledge due to the protocol unique nature, making it more expensive compared to the common Ethernet networking protocol used in the nice SCSI sense. Careful management is like LAN mapping or zoning can be complex and setting up a RAID and other self-healing technologies along with the security measures can be time consuming. However, those tasks are necessary to ensure compliance, disaster recovery and the business continuity. And lastly, SANS may not be suitable for small deployments. The cost and complexity of SANS often make them worthwhile for implementation of in large environments uh, with a big number of servers and storage. Uh, small de deployments can get a desirable results when using HCI with SDS.